Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from BoyOnABoat.com and this is another random Boat Life blog update. Um, this, amazingly, is the six month special. I can't believe that I've actually been living on board for just over six months now. I mean, how time has flown. Um, as you can see, I'm still smiling and still give Boat Life a big thumbs up. There's certainly been a couple of moments of um, despair when there's been engine problems and all sorts of stuff kicking off left, right and centre. And one moment where I did think the boat was sinking, but anyway, <laughs> we'll move on from those moments. As on the whole, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, to interrupt myself and change things up, here's what it was like yesterday morning, for example. This must be like the fifth uh, separate occasion that we've had proper snow. I mean, if you've seen me other videos, you'll know that the snow played havoc with my general decorating and renovations going on inside as couldn't get things to or from the boats because of how bad the roads were. And my goodness me, well, what a first winter to have on board. It's certainly been very educational. But saying that, it has been absolutely beautiful. I mean, just, well, what more can you ask for? Look at this. Anyway, I'm gonna get into the warm. One of the things that has come out of it is that I now know for certain how much coal I need to put in the fire to make sure I don't wake up to a very, very cold boat in the morning. The fire is still my absolute favourite feature of the boat. I mean, being able to go out and collect wood by hand and then when you've cut it to size and all the rest of it, knowing that you're being heated by stuff you've collected and, I don't know, there's a sort of a proper traditional, yeah, that's a job well done sort of feeling. Um, I know it's only a small thing and there's many more people doing much greater work than that but there's a nice sort of yes this is this is the life um, but uh, absolutely fantastic I mean, whacking a kettle on there sticking a pan of soup on the top just simple things like that that I just I really do enjoy about boat life and it is every bit as sort of traditional and stereotypical as it sounds to be honest um, but absolutely love it. As you can imagine there's been an awful lot of learning go on while I've been on board. I mean, before I bought Tilly I'd had only one day on a higher boat in my entire life on the canal. Um, so it's all sorts of things like getting the hang of steering and how fast you should and shouldn't be going, especially if there's other boats around with people on them hanging out of the window. Um, another moment there but that's for some other time. And then you've got things like making sure you run the engine if the boat's not moving for a long period of time to make sure that you don't run out of power with the batteries um, being used by the lights over the long nights as that was one, um, one dark night that I had. Then something else that I was very terrified about at first was the general rules on mooring and I felt like you had to move from everywhere every two days if there was a sign about three miles away. Um, whereas in actual fact the general rule is obviously dependent on the area and what's around you and if there's any signs of course that you can stay in one area for up to two weeks before you then have to move off to a different area and then a different area after that before you could come back in theory to the first area if that makes any sense look it up on the canal and river trust website um, for full details and don't take my word for any of this it's those general things of just day-to-day -day boat life that you can't really describe and you can't really get the hang of until you've actually been doing it. And for example, I mean, mooring up, I was so terrified about leaving the boat but I was only tying it up with a rope at the back and a rope at the front and I'd be putting a third line down wherever I could just to try and make sure that it didn't float off and disappear never to be seen again. And the the incredible effort that went into tying the world's tightest knots and about 500 of them in a rope exaggeration obviously and it's things like that that now i've settled into boat life and got more comfortable with how you should tie a rope and how tight it needs to be that i'm far more relaxed and i've felt confident to leave the boat moored up on me winter mooring for i think about five weeks without moving it without so much as giving the knots or the ropes a glance you may notice that Tilly is looking a lot different now on the inside than when I first got her and that's been an incredible sort of work in progress where I sort of painted it 
and got the real superficial stuff done almost immediately on getting it, just a couple of weeks of work to get that sorted and then lived on board for about four months or so before I thought right now that I've had some time here I know I definitely don't want that, I definitely don't want that, this I definitely need, I need to make some proper space for a nice sitting area so I've got two of these chairs, um, I'll show you a proper walk through very soon, maybe even later on in this same day um, of what Tilly's looking like now and how it all works and what I've generally changed but it's things like that again that no matter how many times over the last three years I'd looked at boats and thought right this is the sort of thing I want this is the sort of thing I want it wasn't until I was in the thick of living on board and really sort of getting stuck into right I wish I had room for this I'm glad I haven't got one of these although this would be quite handy it's um, it's completely sort of altered everything that I'd thought about space and how much I would need as it turns out to be honest I've got very little storage space left and in fact removed one cupboard and I mean you're talking about a 30 foot boat here with only about 15 or so feet actually indoor space and still I've got empty shelves in cupboards and that's something that I really wasn't prepared for and really couldn't have quite figured out until obviously I could say I'd been on board for a while and got the things I needed and got rid of the things that I didn't need Another thing that I certainly hadn't really contemplated and realised fully was how low cost running a boat was going to be. Um, I did have some engine problems which luckily, touch wood, um, healed themselves. So that could have been something that could have instantly made this a very expensive um, way of life. So there's always random things like that that you've got to watch out for. But in terms of the day-to-day -day running, so we've got gas bottles in the back that run the cooker and the boiler for example and then for heating I mean you've got the radiator that runs off the engine so obviously if you're charging up the batteries for example the radiator will go and like I say you've got a wood burner over there a few pence worth of coal a day maximum normally is what I'll use and then all the wood that I can basically pick up and cut myself um, and then it is really, I suppose, diesel for the engine, which, because I don't really move huge distances and just run it every, I don't know, say for my use, like half an hour every day, maybe on average. Some days not at all, some days longer, obviously. Um, just to keep the batteries topped up over these winter months while the boat's not moving. Um, 150 litre diesel capacity, and we're talking about it's probably going to be over a year since filling it up that I'm actually going to need to put any more in so it's things like that that whereas I'd thought hmm, if I'm running a diesel engine all the time I'm surely going to need to buy more diesel than well one tank a year so it's all that sort of thing that you've really got to sort of live on board and figure out for yourself as you go along because obviously a different boat might need more less or well whatever your general system is I mean, some people have the solar panels on the top. I personally have a little solar panel for charging things like my phone and that. And so it's just, well, more free power, really. And those are the things that, like I say, you live on board. And six months later, I'm certainly no expert on things. But for me personally, I certainly know a lot more than I did six months ago when I was wandering around on board going, Oh my God, what am I going to do now? <laughs> Anyway, I feel I've witted on for quite a long time now, especially with that added snow video. So I will sign off here. I'll say I'll do some more videos on various bits about life like I have been doing. Make sure you check out my channel for all the other bits and pieces on board, as well as a few random items as well that you may or may not find interesting. But until the next time, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you look after yourselves and I'll see you around soon. Farewell.